Okay, so next layer, we are going to use um, some colors that we see behind the trees, behind those strong trees. So whatever you see in there, the orange, uh, some of the yellow, green, and some blue at the bottom, we're going to be adding this layer. So we're not at the point where we're using putting those trees yet. We're going to put them after this layer. So let's start with top part, left. Cadmium orange. There's Linda. Yep. So we have cadmium orange. Cadmium yellow medium. Go for ultramarine violet. Top green. And for now, titanium buff. So no yellow, no blue, and no red for now. Titanium buff, okay. Yep, yeah. titanium buff. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the colors. Cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine violet, sap green, and white. Titanium buff? No, white. Titanium oh, you white. Said, you, said, you said titanium. OK, so it is white. OK. Did I say titanium buff? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my dear god. That's OK. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Sorry. Titanium okay. white. Titanium, like titanium white is the same. <laughs> I'm using now with this, you look at what I'm putting together, uh, cadmium orange and a bit of ultramarine violet. And I'm going to take white, put it in. So the ultramarine violet, when I put ultramarine violet and orange, it just tones it down and makes it a little bit more, uh, less vibrant. And I'm gonna come here. Yeah, that's a good color. Just randomly put it in here. See, the colors are a little bit more vibrant right now, although I do have white in it, and it's going to dry darker, so um, it's going to be a little bit more even darker. So if, I, if it goes too dark, then I'm going to add white to my colors. So top part, I'll show you where, right here, where it meets that sky, the sky kind of area. Make it a little bit lighter, because if you keep that too dark and it's, it's going to dry darker, 
you're going to create a strong um, difference in values. Let's keep the value close to each other between this and this, between the sky and the tree, but don't drag it all the way. Just a couple, because see, it's drawing darker already. And I'm reducing, I'm dabbing and turning my my brush around so, so I'm just want to I just want to reduce the um the uh texture now this is very orange right now and you see behind there those trees they see a bit of pink in there so this is where I'm gonna take red cadmium red light With the corner of my brush. Cadmium red is very strong. Take a little bit with the corner of your brush, put it in that light orange that we have here that's mixed with um, orange with white and ultramarine. And then come here and dab a bit of that. Or dab and drag your brush. I'm using a of uh, uh, what is it? A bright. You can use any brush you like, as long as you can get what you are looking for. Of course, you know if you don't have orange, you make orange by using yellow and um, red. Anytime I mix a color and I find that it's too strong, too bright, too vibrant, um, I, I introduce a bit of ultramarine violet in there. And white, of course, white is important. All right, this is good. This is really good. All right, you're not gonna see any of that once we put the trees. So you're gonna see just color. First, some of these colors around. They don't have to be clustered in one corner. So with the corner of my brush, I'm just dabbing a couple of little Lots. brush strokes here and there. Okay, awesome, that's great. All right. This is a little bit too, still too vibrant, this. That's okay, it looks very nice though. Okay, well, we'll leave then, it. Then, then you correct it. We'll leave if it for now. You are not happy. We'll leave as long as I correct it before I put the, tr the trees. In. The trees, the trees, mm. yes. Mm. All right. Okay. Do you want me to give you a couple of minutes to do this layer? Yeah. Okay. I'll just I'll just um, pause now recording and then we'll resume in a couple of minutes.
Okay, so now we're gonna move on to yellow. So I'm gonna take my cadmium yellow medium and it's the same thing. I'm gonna add ultramarine in it to tone it down a bit. Ultramarine violet. So yellow and, vi and, and purple are opposite each other on the color wheel, perfect. And I'm gonna take a tiny bit of white, put it in here. A little bit more of the ultramarine violet. That's better. Just to tone it down. Just um, I don't want it to come forward too much. You know, you you see it, but you you, it, you should be seeing it, but not too much. Re remember, this is the back. Okay, this is not. We're not yet in the front. So, um, oops too much and whatever is in the back usually because of the aerial perspective you get a bit of haze like a, a, a tone of kind of a bit of purple in the back um okay that's good that's good Now I'm gonna just I'm I'm looking at my my um, reference and whatever I see yellow I'm just gonna pass my brush over that area and it doesn't have to look like honestly it doesn't have to look like uh, leaves it could be just a hint of color so just drag your brush around um, put some water in here. My color is watered down, so when it dries, it will dry. It's like a glaze. Right now, it will dry darker. And if it doesn't, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Let's take some to this part, as I can see a little bit of yellow in there. We're still not working with any kind of detail, nothing. No, it's just kind of a bunch of colors. Again, in here, I can see a little bit of that yellow. Let's add a tiny bit of red in there, just in the yellow, just to give it a bit of an orangey color. There, mm, nice. Now, bottom part, yellow, mixed with red, tiny bit of yellow, or even yellow and orange is fine. Now take some sap green, put it in. Ultramarine, violet, let's go down, start adding a bit of that yellowy green. I'm toning down my green using ultramarine violet. And this is now adding a bit of white. You can see a little bit of green in here. And that green that I see in there is a little bit brighter. Okay, perfect. That's good. Anywhere else we need to, um, I need to put green. Yes, tiny bit in here, in here. Perfect, a little, bit, a little bit in here. Dab, so I'm, I'm dabbing with dry brush, dab it. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to take ultramarine violet, put it in my green. Quite a bit of it. That's a good amount. Put white. Again, ultramarine violet. Slowly. I'm adding ultramarine violet slowly. That's good. To the green. To that combination of green in here that I have green and yellow and right there. Yeah. And I'm just going to come here and go in between a little bit, darken this area a tiny bit. Otherwise, I'm not going to have depth. This is a bit too light. You have to be, I have to be patient. We're going to get there, but this needs a little bit of preparation, but we will get there. Ultramarine violet, tiny bit of white, no green, just ultramarine violet and white in this area here. Did you put green down at the very bottom? I can't see the bottom of the canvas. Oh, you did, okay, oh, okay. in the corner, okay. This is ultramarine violet and white mixed with that that color I have here, the, the green color. It's like a muddy color. I lost a bit of the uh, yellow, so I'm putting it back now in the back. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Right, so what I need to do now is glaze this a bit um, and push it back. It's coming forward too much, especially this area here. So I'm let it, I'm gonna use a, a hair dryer, dry it and uh, we'll glaze it. Okay, so to glaze it, I'm going to use cerulean blue and ultramarine violet with white. That's a good color. Very good color. Now, you can use white, uh, you can use, sorry, you can use water to make your color transparent, or you can use, I'm using here, um, clear gesso. Did you add the, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, did you add the, the... The violet, the violet, the ultramarine yes. violet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So ultramarine violet, cerulean blue, a little bit of white, 
wa water or uh, any glazing medium. I'm using uh, clear gesso. So when I use clear gesso, some, let me see here. Yeah, it works. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna take a bit of water in here too. And just go over this side. It will dry darker. white brush and you don't have to glaze the whole thing just where we worked so we can push them back a bit push back the colors there now you're asking probably you're wondering why am I glazing this after I put the color because you can see that this color is darker than the color behind it so I need to do this to push it back. Otherwise, when I put the strong colors in the front, we're not, I'm, I'm not gonna see them. They're gonna compete with the colors in the back. That's why. I know a bit of too much in here. Never go over your glaze twice or three times because you're gonna, this is what's gonna happen, what I did right now. I lift, I lifted the, the, the color. You make a, a ring of dark color around it, so it's it really um, is not it's not uh, recommended. But it's good that it happens, so you can see. And to the right area, Leia? No, I didn't do anything in the right area because oh. um, because the right area has cool colors, but the the left area has uh, warm colors, and they're coming forward. And they do sh they should come forward, but not too much. So yeah, yeah. This one here is this part is behind this part here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. So yes, the right is you. behind. Yeah, right part is behind the left part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that, that looks good now. Okay. So if you look at the reference again, you will see that even those trees in the front that are really strong are not completely 100% all of them in the front. So you have the trees, these trees in here, here, and here, these are in the front. And this one, the big one here, is in the back. And there's another one in the back right here. So there are one, two, three different layers of, of oh, there's one here too. So, yeah. One, two, three, and four. That's even closer. So you can see that this is deeper in colors than the ones in behind it. These twigs here in the front. They're almost black, the twigs in the front. Okay. All right. So now I have here burnt umber and cerulean blue. I'm going to mix burnt umber, cerulean blue. Okay. And I'm going to put white in there.
this is like a grayish, beautiful bluish gray. And I'm gonna take my um, clear gesso, just kind of eyeball it, I would say to here. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. This is the center. There's a tree right there, right behind this tree. There's another one going across this way. And it kind of disappears into a thin branch at the top. Even if it's not in the right position, it doesn't matter. It's glazed on, so no problem. And another little, or I'll, I'll use eventually a, a smaller brush. Um, there aren't any, I can't see them, what I'm putting in there, I can't see, but I think it's, it's a good idea to put a couple. Another one here. That's the center. There's a there are two trees in the center, right in, in between here. There's another one that comes from the bottom. And it goes like up and across. And again it disappears. Now I can bring a round brush and take this gray color and uh, use use the color to add a bit of couple branches in the back, little twigs here and there. No, they might be, they, you know, it, it doesn't matter that if they're there or not, it just adds texture in the back before I start putting the new, the trees in the front. Up here. Random, just put random branches. They don't have to connect. They don't have to make sense, but try to make them thin. So I am using a glaze in here, but at the same time, the glaze, sometimes I add some water to it to make my color more um, easier to, to use. And with just with the top of my brush, like tip of my brush, I just drag some some leaves here and there. Honestly, don't worry about how they look. Just put those branches in the back or twigs or whatever. I see a lot of them. So let's have fun with this. As long as they don't, they're not too too wide. Okay. Now, I want to give you a, a couple of minutes before we come come to the trees. Put before we put the trees in the front. Okay. Now for the trees, we have ultramarine 
and how to breathe. Oh my God. Okay, burnt umber and black, any black. Now, another combination that you could use is ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And it really gives you a beautiful black or gray. So if you add a bit of gray to it, I'm sorry, if you add a bit of white, you'll get a beautiful gray. Um, and, uh, you know, it could tip more towards the blue, if you like, or more towards the brown, depending on how much you put in there, the ratio of uh, the two colors. But, and it makes a, a very nice black, these two colors, uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Okay, but now I have ultramarine, uh, I have burnt umber and black, and I just watered it down a bit so it's not too thick. I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna come here and we're gonna do it just um, instead of tracing it on a tracing paper or on a transparent paper, uh, we're tracing the original. I'm just gonna do it freehand. So let's take the first one that I see on the left. It's a kind of a small one, not like narrow one, not too, not too wide. And I'm gonna come here with the corner of my brush. It's a bright, I'm gonna take that. Next one next to it, I'll take a little bit of black in here. I'm just placing them. So it doesn't mean this is the last, the final color. We're gonna be putting, um, playing around with the color a bit after. Now there's one next to it that is a little bit wider. And there's a small, like a narrow space in between. And that's another thing when you're painting trees. It's the placement and the size of the trees. Um, you want to make sure that the different the distance between the trees, the size of the trees, they all make a big, huge difference to the composition. They're not sitting there haphazard. They are. They should be sitting in a position where they are composition wise, they look really interesting. Right. I'm still working with the trees in the back. So this tree has a branch that comes out which is nice because it crosses the, the ones in the front. So it's gonna be something like this. And uh, another little one that comes out this way. And it actually kind of disappears in the behind the tree that is in the front. So it's not too long. I made it too long here. I'm gonna remove some of it. There. Okay, so now there's one wide one, big one. Uh, I would say somewhere here. A bit too too far, but too much to the right, but that's okay. I'm just gonna put it here. It leans a bit. To the left.
there's another one. Um, there are two branches coming out from here. And they go, one goes across this way. And it's not exactly the same. Like it's not in the right position exactly the same. And another one that comes from here. And it goes this way. I'm going to zoom in a bit, so I'm going to pause to zoom in, and then I'll... Uh... All right, now, let's continue. Burnt umber, black. I have more burnt umber than black in here, but black is helping, um, making the burnt umber darker. And uh, quite a bit of water in there, not much, but enough for the brush to slide easily on the canvas. Now, I'm gonna take another one. Now there's a big one right here. And um, I did move the position a bit of the, those trees, but that's okay. This is a wide one, wider than these in here. It's kind of the main tree. Trees are wider at the bottom and they become narrower at to on top. So they're not exactly the same width from top to bottom. And you can see my trees are not opaque. They're kind of transparent a bit, but that's okay because I'm placing them right now. I don't want them to be too opaque because I can always adjust if they're not opaque, like now. Wipe my brush with water and remove. I mean, this can be done even if your brush is not uh, is opaque. It doesn't matter. Your your uh, color is opaque. It doesn't matter. But it's easier when its uh, color is slightly transparent. It doesn't mean it's going to stay like this. That's okay. This is just the placing. I'm just placing and adjusting and um, trying to make sure they look good before I continue and I start working over this. So this is a tiny bit too wide top. It's okay, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's be nice if it's not too wide. There, especially the top. Okay, now let's work on the trees next to it, next to this one again. So I'm going to put a tree, two of them, one here.
And another one oh. next to it that goes all the way up. Actually, this should be a little bit wider. All right, next to it, another one. I would like to open up the trees in between here. So I'm removing some of the paint or I could do it when I am painting the um, leaves. All right, a little bit of a twiggy kind of branch that comes out of this tree. Nice. Now, tree is here. One more tree, wider. The distribution and composition of these those trees are very nice. Um, the width, the length, the the uh, way they're leaning um, in different direction is very beautiful. small branch that goes up. I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to take, go this way. And from this, there is a, a third one that comes over that way. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to put it right now. <clears throat> I'm going to put the last one last three on this side, right side. Goes all the way up. It, oh, sorry, it intersects with this tree and it disappears behind it. So <clears throat> this, this is front tree. Um, I'm not sure, is it? Because, uh, um, it it's behind it. Yeah, yeah, it's behind, it's behind this one. Yeah. Yeah. Really, this is really nice, fun to do. Okay. Now these trees are dry, kind of, the ones on the left are kind of dry. Now I can go back at this point and I can push some of these trees back. Um, but before I do that, let's kind of finish adding some branches. I'm gonna to switch to a round brush, same colors.
And let's kind of play around with those branches up here. Because I didn't position the trees exactly the way they are here, I'm trying to play around with the, um, some, some of these uh, branches. I'm going to go ahead and spend some time now um, adding some twigs and branches up here, which are, there are many of them. But it's fun. If you're patient, you need patience for this. All right, um, I know this is not there, but there's a gap in here and it'll be nice if we can put some something here. Wider at the bottom a little bit and then it's narrower. All right, so let's put some more. I, I, I see a lot of twigs and um, so I'm not worried about putting. Branches and twigs everywhere. You 
And you see some of them are so like very strong, dark. We are going to glaze some of these branches and twigs. Not all of them, but some of them are going to be glazed. This is really random right now. It's not in a, any kind of direction, just random. And they're not all of them um, clear. Some of them, you know, I just kind of make them, um, you know, I, I stop and then I continue. So I don't continue with the same strong brushstroke. So that what I mean is this kind of, I put the twigs, stop, continue, stop, continue. That makes them look like they're in between the leaves. Some of these twigs are going to disappear when we start putting the leaves in the front, but that's okay. I'm going to finish one section at a time. So I'm not going to spread it out. I'm going to go down and uh, try to finish it, uh, to finish one part. It's easier. See how like in between the, those little twigs in the back, they soften the, the um, in between um, the branches in between there this is kind of like harsh and there's nothing in between so when you start when we come here and then we put twigs and we put different sizes of uh, twigs some of them larger than the others some of them are faint some of them are connected some of them are not it just makes it makes those it softens the softens the um, distance this gap between those harsh tree trunks. And you'll see, once we start glazing, you'll see I'll, I will be glazing some of those, some of these branches.
Oh, this is so much fun. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Some, some of them here. I know at the bottom you don't see a lot of that, but it, we would be glazing them. So they're there, but I will push them back once I start glazing. And some of those twigs are very interesting, the way they curve and then they come out this way. Very nice. So these branches I'm putting now, or twigs, I should say, they're softening that this gap and filling the gap actually as well. Not only make it softer, they fill it. All right, let's come to this part. So you see here, I have the ones that I glazed in the back. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting on top of that, the ones in the front. So I have depth now. I have ones, the ones that are glazed in the back, faint, and then I have the strong ones in the front. All right, I'm gonna to come to this part, it's easier. And I'm not worried about any of this right now. Like this, I'm just placing my twigs, branches, twigs, trees, and then I'm gonna come back, push some trees to the back, bring some to the front, and then I will add um, some, uh, some leaves in the front and it's gonna be back and forth kind of thing. So now I'm gonna take from this branch here, I'm gonna take one that goes across yeah. and this is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna take one from do it this way, this way. And then I'm gonna go up a bit. If it's easier, draw it first and then go over it with paint. So for me to see it, 
I'm going to add a little bit more black so it's not too, so it's a bit stronger. That's a good one. Now, let's start, go back to the back trees. And again, I'm not worried about too much about the color. I can glaze and change the color anytime I want. Now, let's bring one a strong one here, going across this way. Another one that goes this way. One that goes that way. Right, now, I'm gonna bring one that goes across here. So again, I'm gonna look at the big gap and see where I can place it. I um, would say somewhere here. And just continue. Oh, that's too big. A lot of twigs here, very subtle ones, small, but a lot of them. Put them mentally. Oh, oh yeah. see, that's the thing, you have to be careful. So in between this, all of this jungle of little branches, you can see that I'm adding ones that are um, stronger. Um, this one here comes, let's take it from here, and it goes down this way. And then another one.
Okay. Again, let's, we're going down now. So my water is my brush, my paint is watered down, kind of, it's not too thick. And when I'm pressing, I'm putting my brush on, I'm not pressing hard. So I'm using the tip of my brush. That's why I'm getting around um, a, a straight line or a line that's kind of, that's why my brush is cooperating, I'd say. That's how I usually say. But I, my brush cooperates better when it has the right consistency of paint. Right, so I'm going to take now, there's a branch in the front. Now I have, I can put it now or not put it at all for now and work on the leaves in the back um, and then put that branch in the front. Usually I like to, when it's very busy like this, I like to wait and adjust things before I put the one in the front. It just, I find that when I put the front one in the front, it's hard for me to go back all around it and fix things. So I'm, I'm gonna ignore it for now and then we'll see. So let's keep working on the ones in the back. Okay, we're good. Very good. Enough. Yeah, yeah. Enough for today. Now, I think we're, I'm gonna give you time to do all this and then we'll do the trees. Uh, we'll work on the trees again next week and push back some of them, adjust the size. Actually, some of them can be adjusted right now. I can see. And next week we will work on the um, the shape of the trees, the finish, um, push back some of them, bring some of them forward. So um, it'll be a little bit more work next week. And then we'll put the, the leaves on. And then this is when it's gonna look really fantastic with the leaves on. We're gonna glaze some of these twigs that I have. This is so much, too many of them and they're very busy yeah so i'm gonna glaze some of them some of the twigs not all of them to push them back all right so this is how it looks this week 
next week we'll be um, glazing and refining these trees.